Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering mostly fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies, but also a couple of toxicities. This is the second video in my vitamins section. I would suggest watching the first one if you haven't done so already, because it has some overall principles that are going to be applied to this video. We'll start with vitamin A. And you can see here in the top right corner, I give it a high yield rating of three. For those of you who do not know what that is, it's a rating scale from zero to 10, giving a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the step one exam. And if you'd like to learn specifics about the high yield rating, you can head to my website here. Vitamin A goes by many names, retinol, retinal, retinoic acid, but for the purpose of step one, they all mean the same thing and they're gonna find it in liver, fruits, and vegetables. There are two main functions of vitamin A. The first one is it functions as a light pigment in the retina, which should be easy to remember. Retinoic acid has retina right in there. And deficiencies of the actions of vitamin A in the retina are going to lead to night blindness. Vitamin A is also a growth factor that causes the differentiation of cells. That is why it's going to be used to treat certain types of AML or acute myeloid leukemia because it will cause these immature cells to mature and differentiate. Measles may also be treated with vitamin A supplementation because deficiencies of vitamin A can prevent certain immune cells from differentiating and being effective. As you might assume, because unborn fetuses need highly orchestrated cell differentiation, vitamin A in excess is going to be a teratogen, meaning that it will cause many problems for an unborn fetus if a mother's consuming too much of it. So vitamin A should not be used for any sorts of treatments in somebody who may be pregnant. This would include things like acne, which is another treatment possibility for vitamin A. Vitamin A toxicity can cause all sorts of problems, nausea, irritability, headaches, visual problems, changes to the skin and hair, and a whole lot of other stuff. And there's not really any one classic presentation that seems to show up more often on the step one questions. And step one questions on vitamin A toxicity just tend to not show up all that often anyway. And all the other vitamin deficiencies and toxicities seem to have very clear very intuitive, easy to remember presentations. So honestly, I just figure out vitamin A toxicity is the answer via process of elimination. If the question stem doesn't seem to fit any of the other vitamins, that's when I choose vitamin A toxicity. Now we can talk about vitamin D, which is gonna be covered in a lot more depth in the hormone section, as far as things like absorption, as well as the musculoskeletal section, as far as what deficiencies can cause. But vitamin D is going to be created in the body via sun exposure, and it can also be consumed in milk. And this is cow's milk because breast milk is actually low in vitamin D. The inactive precursor to vitamin D undergoes enzymatic processing in the liver and the kidney to become 1,25-dihydroxy vitamin D3. Vitamin D primarily increases the absorption of calcium in the diet, so it should be intuitive that deficiencies of vitamin D is going to affect the bones. Vitamin D deficiency in adults is going to be referred to as osteomalacia, and vitamin D deficiency in kids is going to be rickets. Vitamin K will also be covered in much more depth in the hematology section, but I will touch on a few things here. Vitamin K is responsible for the modification of numerous proteins required for coagulation. Therefore, deficiencies of vitamin K are going to lead to deficiencies in coagulation factor 2, 7, 9, and 10, which are usually given in Roman numerals, as well as deficiencies in protein C and protein S. Obviously, that's going to lead to numerous problems of clotting, so you're going to get different bruising throughout the body, as well as an increased PT and increased PTT. Vitamin K is going to be taken into the diet and synthesized by normal gut flora in the GI system. Both of these routes lead to an inactive form of vitamin K that must be enzymatically processed by epoxide reductase in the liver to become active. 
patients who have problems absorbing fat are also going to have problems absorbing vitamin K in the diet. Patients on broad-spectrum antibiotics for too long can also have problems synthesizing vitamin K from their normal gut flora because these antibiotics are going to wipe out all that good bacteria in your GI system that normally produce vitamin K. So either one of these problems can lead to vitamin K deficiency. Vitamin K deficiency is also something that's common in newborns for a couple of reasons. One is breast milk is relatively low in vitamin K and newborns have not yet been inoculated with the normal gut flora that creates vitamin K, so they don't have that yet. And this is why most newborns, at least in the U.S., are given a shot of vitamin K. Coumadin or warfarin is going to intentionally inhibit the enzyme epoxide reductase. In effect, you're trying to create a vitamin K deficiency on purpose so you can inhibit clotting in somebody that is at high risk for certain clotting disorders. And patients who have liver failure or other types of liver disease may also have problems with epoxide reductase. This could create vitamin K deficiency unintentionally. Here are a list of a couple of related items that are pretty low yield, so I would suggest not spending a whole lot of time on this until you've covered the higher yield material in depth. That brings us to the end of the video. If you like my videos, please consider making a small one-time donation on my webpage using PayPal or a credit card. Unlike similar study aids that are available for $100 or more, I'm releasing all this stuff completely free. I don't want to leverage students' test anxiety for a profit or contribute to your student debt. However, I also have six figures worth of medical school loans and have spent a nice chunk of change on this website for things like recording equipment, software, and web hosting. I am currently planning on expanding the content and features of Stomp on Step 1, but none of that will be possible if I continue to hemorrhage money like I am now. If everybody watching this video gave like 10 bucks, I'd have enough money to make those improvements to the site without digging any further into my own piggy bank. You probably spend more than that every day on your whipped frappa choco double mintachino with caramel on top. So why don't you give your body a chance to recover from the caffeine overdose and send a few of those bucks my way.